Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, are you ready? Ready for what? For breakfast. Isn't it ready? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it isn't, I bet. The oranges are juiced, the coffee's dripped, and I'm just pushing the toast down. Then stop pushing me. Expect me to eat without a tie? You could have tied ten ties if you'd been dressing instead of just acting mysterious, skulking around in corners. Well, you've been skulking around after me. I have not. But every time I put my head in here, you looked as though you were trying to hide something under the telephone. You look awfully suspicious. I'll look and you cook. If you want me to dress, go put your head in the oven. But breakfast is ready, I said. Three drops of orange juice and a slice of toast. You call that breakfast? You know that's all you ever eat. I'm going to be working in Redbury all day. I want a real breakfast. What would you say was the difference between a breakfast and a real breakfast? <laughs> Never mind the question. Just uh, bring me kippered herring, possum pie, hominy grits, and French toast. Our last herring just swam away. Well, I'll settle for French toast if you can make it. If I can make it. Didn't you know you married the toast of Paris? I said <laughs> toast, not puns. Or did I muffin that? Ooh, Ooh. that's... Awful. I'd rather cook than listen to that. All right, I'll make you French toast. I'm still very suspicious. Three, four. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Flannery. (coughs) Mr. Flannery, this is Norton. David Norton. I'm sorry I have to talk so low. Oh, I... I can't talk any louder. Uh, Mr. Flannery... Uh, Monday's my wife's birthday, and I'm trying to surprise her. Oh, David, I... Now, uh, listen to me, Kelly. You've got to get those forms up today because we've ordered the ready mix. They can't pour when the drivers get there. You know what'll happen. It won't be good. Okay, okay, Kelly. That was Kelly. Does he like French toast, too? With honey, three times a day. I'm your honey, three times a day. Say, David, Mom and I have a very busy day planned. So would you drop me off at her house on your way to Redbury? Do you want me to drive you? What's the matter with that? Mm-hmm. Say, you're not like yourself at all this morning. First you want to eat like a boxer, and then you want to drive around like a hermit. All right, I'll drive you. I'd love to. But it changes my plans a little. Claudia? Hmm? Hmm. I uh, smell something burning. What's burning? Eggs. Egg? Oh, it's the French toast. Let us see how it could. Uh, let's see. Two. Uh, mm-hmm. Hello. Hello, Mr. Flannery. This is David Norton again. Yes, I, I, I know you aren't, Kelly. I'll explain all that when I see you. I can't waste any time because I'm going to be out of town all day long, and, and this is my only chance to talk to you. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm calling about the, the Great Dane. Yes, the one we looked at the other night. Have you sold it? Oh, David. Oh, never mind. I'll call you later. David, are you sure you smell something burning? Uh, now, see here, Kelly. Excuse. Uh, excuses won't do. You'll, you'll, you, yeah, yes, you'll have to get those forms in place today or we'll be, we'll be stuck with all the penalties. Well, that was... Kelly again. David, I haven't even put the French toast on the stove when you smelled it burning. It was still soaking on the table. It's on the stove now. I say I can smell it burning now. Oh, my poor little toast. David, why didn't you tell me instead of talking and talking? Three, five, five, ten, four. Hello, Mr. Flannery. Yes, I know your name isn't Kelly. Look, don't say anything now. You can tell me about it when I come over. It's the only time I'll have all day. I'll be in your store just as soon as... Yeah, between 9.15 and 9.30 this morning. Will you be there? Uh, that's great, Mr. Flannery. That's great. Claudia, is that you? Expecting 
somebody else? No. I'm in hoping. I'm expecting laundry. How's the parrot? Surly. He hasn't had a decent meal for three days. Well, we'll go right down to Mr. Flannery's pet shop and buy him a little box of bird seed. And, listen, besides, Mama, you ought to thank Mr. Flannery for your present. Say, what do you think David's going to give me for my birthday? He hasn't told me. He hasn't? Maybe it'll be a surprise. Well, maybe he won't give you anything. That would be a nice surprise. I hope it doesn't rain on Monday. What's the good of a birthday in the rain? Lots of very nice people have been born in the rain. But getting presents on sunny days is twice as nice. Greedy. I don't mean it that way. Well, look at us, Mama. We just give each other presents when we feel like it. We don't need occasions like birthdays. You and I are different. We've always been together. But David and I haven't. I wonder what he'll surprise me with. I'd like to meet the man who can surprise you. Maybe you have, Mama. I'm not going to ask him questions, not one. If you don't ask him questions, I'll eat my hat. Hello, Mr. Flannery. Oh, my, it's Mrs. Norton. Well, 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 I certainly am surprised to see you. You remember my mother, don't you, Mr. Flannery? Your mother? Oh, yes, yes, yes indeed, your mother. Uh, of course I remember your mother. I remember everyone who's nice to kittens. Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Good morning, Mrs. Flannery. Mom and Solomon have had the most wonderful talks, Mr. Flannery. They've become really intimate. Ah, oh, you'll find Solomon more interesting the more you know, Mrs. Brown. He's such a widely traveled bird, I call him. Marco Polo with feathers. But poor old Marco Polo isn't getting anything to eat, Mr. Flannery. He isn't. Well, no. As a matter of fact, we came here to get another box of parrot food for him. Mrs. Brown, I can't tell you how glad I am to hear that you are so fond of Solomon. I don't want to see him starve, at any rate. Well, now, here's a box of our finest board seed. And if that parrot hasn't eaten since yesterday, may I suggest you accept it as a gift and hurry right home and feed him. Parrots can be very nasty when they aren't fed, and I wouldn't waste a minute. You are very generous, Mr. Flannery. It's a parting gift to my old friend Solomon. Oh, I miss him. Now, uh, oh, my, it's almost 9.30, and I must feed the canaries, and I know you ladies have a busy day ahead of you, so I won't ask you to stay a minute longer. But I hope you will come back again some other time. You go right ahead and feed the canaries, Mr. Flannery. Can I watch? Mama loves animals. Mama loves kitchen curtains more. Goodbye. Now, come along. Uh, really, Claudia, the minute you step foot in the pet shop, you go mad. I'm coming. Goodbye, Mr. Flannery, and thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Flannery. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm sorry I'm so late. I had a terrible time finding a place to park. Uh, he isn't sold yet, is he? David. Hello, David. Oh, well, well. Well, so, so you're here. I, I knew it was going to be this kind of a morning. David, aren't you happy to see me? I'm thrilled, thrilled. It's been so long. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, David. Good morning, Mr. Norton. And uh, you too, Mr. Flannery. The top of the morning to you. Well, that takes care of that. Now, what do we say? David, uh, The ladies dropped in to buy some board seed for the parrot. They were just leaving, Mr. Norton. Well, well, I, I was certainly lucky to come in uh, just when I did, wasn't I? Timed it perfectly. I think so. Hey, mm -hmm. why aren't you in Redbury? What are you doing here? Me? Oh, I just happened to be driving by. Yes. So I, I dropped in to say hello. You always do this? Oh, every now and then I get an uncontrollable urge to say hello. 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 Now, what are you doing here? <laughs> Claudia, hello. you've just saved me from eating my hat. What do you mean? Questions. Well, this isn't anything to do with that other thing, Mama. This was hardly a question. Besides, there's no law against my asking perfectly innocent questions. Well, the pets and I won't take any more of your time now, but maybe we can look forward to seeing you later, Mr. Norton. Mr. Flannery, that reminds me. Wish a special Happy New Year to the Great Dane we saw the other day, would you? Uh, uh, what Great Dane? Don't you remember it? The one we saw the night we bought Mama the parrot. Oh, you mean that junior great buffalo. <laughs> He's probably just as stupid as he is big. He's probably much smarter than you are. Well, who wants a dog that's smarter than his owner? It's bad enough to, that he's bigger. I want him, that's who. Can't we get him, David? Another question. Can't we get him, David? You got a small stable to keep him in? We've got an extra room. That room is reserved for Mr. Young Norton to be. Wouldn't you feel a lot safer if you knew I had a real dog like that to protect me? Uh, Claudia. He'd probably start wrestling with you the first day. I'm sure Dr. Rowland would love that. He's not a wrestling dog. He's a walking dog. But does he know it? He must. Oh, David. 
He's just the way you'd be if you were a dog. Strong and graceful and sure of himself. He'd never say anything wrong. Oh, there's one great difference between Mr. Norton and the Great Dane. The Great Dane is soul. No. <gasps> oh, that's terrible. He's, uh, he's soul? Soul. I'm uh, sorry I didn't get a chance to say so sooner, Mr. Norton, but uh, I've already sold the Dane, and I don't think I'll ever have another one like him. Well, well that, that settles that. Now what? David, can't we find out who Mr. Flannery sold him to? Maybe he'd sell him to us. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, Mrs. Norton, but uh, knowing what I know about the man I sold him to, I don't think he'll ever let the dog go as long as he lives. Well, I hope he likes him better than I did. Well, Claudia, what's this sudden excitement about a dog? You never mentioned him before two minutes ago. He must have been in my unconscious all the time, Mama. I didn't know you had one. And now I know that that's what made me want to come here this morning. It just drove me here. Well, I thought it was Solomon's appetite. We could have gotten out at the corner. And hearing the Dane sold, that makes me realize there isn't anything I wanted more than him. What a happy nature my child has. Isn't there any way at all we can get him, Mr. Flannery? I know David wants him just as much as I do, even if he isn't saying so. Mm. Don't you? What did you say? That I, I want said... him just as much as... Well, frankly... Frankly, no. Oh, David, you're just philosophizing. Mr. Flannery, isn't there any other way we could... No, uh, no way at all. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Norton. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. And goodbye to you, Mr. Norton. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Flannery. All the other animals look so little next to him. I'm heartbroken. You recover, dear. What makes you think so? I know you, darling. You don't know me at all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Of course, Mr. Norton, even if the buyer won't sell you the dog, it won't hurt for you to know who he is. Mm -hmm. Who is he? He's a man I was speaking to on the phone this morning. He wants the day in for delivery Monday, and he'll have him. His name, Mr. Norton, is Kelly. Kelly? Oh, Kelly? Mm-hmm. A simple name like that, Mr. Norton. The first name that would come to an Irishman's mind the first thing in the morning. Well, well, Mr. Flannery. And it's been a fine day in the morning for us Irishmen after all. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. During this festive season... If the young folks want to have parties, by all means, let them. Where there's open house, there's usually goodwill and zest for living. Just order a case of Coca-Cola. Put plenty in the refrigerator, and hospitality is on hand awaiting. No matter whether your fixings are hearty hamburgers, fancy salads and sandwiches, or simple crackers or nothing at all, where there's Coke, there's a party. A party you can enjoy, too. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>